This is the first section of chapter one in FP2, verb P2, on number theory. And we're going to be looking at the division algorithm. Now, this chapter uh, just concerns whole numbers. And we have special symbols which we can use to uh, show that we're talking about certain types of numbers. We have integers, we have uh, complex numbers, uh, we have real numbers, imaginary numbers. But if we're talking about integers, then we can use this sort of special looking Z, which is called Zahlen, which is German for number. And this symbol, if you see it, means we're talking about integers. So integers are positive and negative. So um, we can write like this. So I'm just using those three dots just to show it goes on forever like that. Um, if I am just interested in positive integers, you may say, see this in some textbooks. They, some textbooks might have slightly different notation. So here we're just talking about positive integers. Um, we also have what we call natural numbers. And um, in core one, I think it is, you learn about the sum of natural numbers. And these are just like the counting numbers. And we use an N like this to show that we're talking about the counting numbers. Uh, and they all start from one. So they're always going to be positive. And it's just these numbers here and the dots just indicate they go on forever so integers positive and negative whole numbers uh, integers with a little star or it may have a little plus sign next to it um, or a plus sign in the zero shows that we're talking about positive whole numbers and the natural numbers are like the counting numbers where we just count up first number being one now since this section is all about uh, division let's uh, indicate how we can show that one number divides another now if you see this notation so an a or a number an integer a line here and a b or another integer there what this means is that a divides into b okay the number a divides into b now you can think of this in different ways so you could also think of it, and I'm going to write this in different colours because this, this is not the actual proper definition. Um, if A divides into B, another way of thinking of it is that B is a multiple of A. Now when I say that uh, one number divides into another uh, like this, it means that there's no remainder. It divides exactly into that number. So another way of thinking of it is that B is a multiple of A. This might be a good point to do an example here. So let's say I had um, 7 line 28 like this. Right, so 7 divides into 28 exactly. That, that means there's no remainder. Um, B is a multiple of A. Yes, so 28 is um, 4 times 27. And another way of thinking of it is that A will be a factor of B and 7 is a factor of 28. So another way of thinking about it, again, this is not the strict definition, is that A is a factor of B. Right, so now we understand this notation here. There's lots of different rules that we can um, derive from that. Okay, so let's start with the first rule and it's this. So if A divides B and A is not equal to zero. So quite often in these questions, uh, we're not concerned about um, the integer zero. So quite often you'll have A can't be zero, B can't be zero. It follows on, and when you see an arrow like this, it means it follows on that B equals a multiple of A. So this K here just means 
a multiple of, and we've said that already, haven't we? We said it here, b is a multiple of a. So if we write that down, b is a multiple of a. So b can be written as an integer times a. So every letter I'm writing down in all of these questions, um, the letters are going to represent integers. So I'll just write that down. So k is in the set of or is a um, element of the set of integers. In other words, k will be an integer. Right, next rule. And the next rule is this. Okay, a divides a. In other words, every number divides itself. Yeah, so I'll just write that down. So the, what this actually means is that any integer, not number, any integer can be divided by itself, by itself. Next one is this, a divides zero. In other words, um, zero can be divided by anything. So what this means is, you can write it like this, zero divided by a, yeah? So um, you could say that all numbers are factors of zero. Yeah, all numbers are factors. In this case, b is, b is uh, zero. All numbers are factors of zero. Zero is a multiple of every number. Uh, any number divides into zero. So that's what this statement here means. Next one is this. If we see this, a, a line with a little dash across it, b, like this, it means that a does not divide into b. Okay, so A does not divide into B. So an example might be um, 7, little thing like this, and 20. Yeah, because I can't divide 7 into 20 exactly. And if you were trying to prove that, you could say, well, 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 3 is 21. I can't do 7 times any integer and get 20. Yeah, I can't do 7 times an integer, like this definition here, and get 20. Right, next rule is this one. If A divides B, okay, so A is a factor of B, and A divides a different number C, so A is a factor of A and C, then it follows that A is a, a factor of an integer times B, plus a different integer times by c. So let's think about this. So a is a factor of a. a goes into b. a is also a factor of c. a, it will be a factor of any multiple of the first number plus any multiple of the second number. So here, n and m are integers. So I'll just put that down. So n and m are integers. Next rule is this. If a divides b and b divides c, it follows that a divides c. So a is a factor of a number, b is a factor of a number, well, then A is a factor of this number here. Yeah, that's what this rule here is expressing. And then the last rule for now is this. If A divides B, then now this arrow is going to have, right, be pointing in both directions, which means you can go either way. If A divides B, then a multiple of A 
divides the same multiple of b so in this case the multiple must be the same it's a bit like scaling up imagine like ratios or or fractions so i don't know if we had 5 and 25 here so 5 goes into 25 if we multiply both of those by 2 let's actually write that down so let's say we had 5 divides 25 and if i had n equal as let's make it 3 rather than 2 that means that 15 5 times 3 divides 75 yeah so that's basically what that rule means and we might do the same with these ones here let's give some examples of some rules so 6 divides 12 12 divides uh, 36 so it follows that 6 divides 36 so that's an example of this rule in use here and we could do the same with with this rule here right now we've got all of those things out of the way let's actually look at this um, this division algorithm and how it works so the first thing is that i can write a number as in this form okay i'll go through all of this so imagine i was working out a divided by b a divided by b okay now a divided by b can be written as b times an integer plus an integer here a remainder so let's write all of these things down so r here is the remainder what's left over once we divide one number by another remainder and well if this the remainder is zero then it means that uh, b divides a this number the number that we're dividing by is called the divisor the number of whole number times that the divisor goes into the um, number we're dividing by is called the quotient so this is called a quotient q for quotient and the number that we're dividing is called a dividend so when you do the dividend divided by the divisor the dividend is equal to the divisor times by a quotient plus a remainder now let's write an example because this might be difficult to sort of get your head around so let's say i was doing 50 divided by 7. Um, actually let's choose a different number because i don't really want to get uh, 7 there. let's do 50 divided by 6 so um, 6 goes into 50 8 times and 6 times 8 is 48 with a remainder of 2 so using the notation above my dividend is 50 so what's 50 equal to it's equal to my divisor which is 6 times by the quotient where it goes into 8 times plus the remainder of 2 so it's just basically rewriting a division now one little note here i forgot to mention about the remainder the remainder must be positive we can't have negative remainder that's particularly important when we're looking at using this division algorithm for negative numbers so remember the remainder must also must always be positive and the last thing is i can rewrite this rule here and write it in terms of the remainder so i could write the remainder is equal to the dividend minus the divisor times the quotient so all i've done is just sort of rearrange this that's taken away bq from both sides so if you use the previous example that we had here 50 divided by 6 well there was a remainder of 2 and what's that equal to well it's equal to 50 the dividend minus 6 times 8 
yeah so um, these two rules these are important bits that we're going to be using for the questions that we're going to be doing in a moment okay here it says given that a divides b show that negative a divides b now remember in these questions we're dealing with positive and negative integers so let's start with the statement that's been given a divides b now using a definition that means b is equal to some multiple of a and remember k is an integer so k is an element of the integer set of numbers now because k is an integer it means that um, it could be negative so you could have negative k yeah k doesn't have to be positive it could be negative so if i take what i've written there that's the same as saying um, a or k times by negative a yeah negative sign doesn't have to be next to the k we can just move it to the a so it means the the same thing and that proves our statement yeah um, this if we use the uh, definition and use it the other way around so we go from here to here what have we got well negative a also divides b right so each pair of numbers below determine whether the first integer divides the second so if the first integer divides the second it means that I can write the second integer as a multiple of the first integer right so you'll probably be using your cal cal calculator to help you work this out so if 11 divides 143 it means that I can write 143 as a multiple of 11 now if I work that out I'll actually get a value of k as 13 13 times 11 um, 13 times 11 is 143 so it follows then that 11 does divide 143 okay b so does negative 4 divide 28 if negative 4 divides 28 28 can be written as some multiple positive or negative of negative 4 and it can be uh, if that multiple is or that integer is negative 7 so it follows that negative 4 does divide 28 in the next one does 15 divide 47 if 15 divides by 47 47 can be written as a multiple of 15 now I know we know that it doesn't um, um, <coughs> it's not a multiple of 15 but we need to prove it we need to show it so, and we'll show it by saying okay let's see 15 times by 3 well that's 45 15 times by 4 well that's 60 uh, there aren't any other integers between 3 and 4 so there isn't a value of k an integer value of k so that means that 15 does not divide 47 and then the last one d does uh, 3 divide 2 if it does then 2 can be written as an integer times by 3 we know it it can't be um, but again we need to prove it we need to show it so if we did 3 times 0 0 3 times 1 it's 3 well there aren't any other integers between 1 and 2 so we're not going to be able to make two so then it follows that three does not divide two you could also on these last two here 
um, if you found um, a number for k and it wasn't an integer that also proves that the first number doesn't divide the second so for example I could instead go here well um, 47 equals k times 15 well that works if k is um, 47 over 15 but it's not an integer and the same with this one uh, 2 equals k times 3 well that would give k equal to 2 divided by 3 but that's not an integer either k needs to be an integer positive or negative so in this question here it's asking us to list all the divisors of these numbers now remember the divisors are like the factors in a way aren't they but they can be positive or they can be negative and you might want to just list out the multiples or the multiplications just to make sure you don't miss any out so you've got one times eight two times four so i know that the positive factors are one two uh, four and eight but we also have the negative factors as well so negative one negative two negative four negative eight and then for b well you can only do one times 11 because it's a prime number so the only positive factors are 1 and 11 then the negative factors will be negative 1 and negative 11 so really i should say divisors rather than factors okay given that um, a b and c are integers prove that if a divides b and a divides c then a divides a multiple of b and a multiple of m where m and n are integers but not necessarily the same integer they can be different this was given to you as fact on the first slide so now we just need to prove it right so let's start with our definition so if a divides b um, then it means that b can be written as um, an integer times by a also if a divides c um, then c can be written as an integer times by um, a so i'm just going to put the end here that k and l are integers so we're just using our definition here just put that in right now what we're going to do is we're going to take this side of this statement and we're going to write it in terms of ka and la so bn plus cm um, is equal to now all we're doing is replacing b with this and c with this so what do we get we get b times by k a oh, sorry not b times by k a um, k a times by n plus l a times by m so let's put the times in there we can uh, factorize this out so we can take a out as a factor so i'll have a and then kn plus lm now all of this stuff here well what have we got we've got integer times an integer well what's that it's an integer plus an integer times an integer well that's an integer the whole lot is an integer so what i could say is something like let um, a different integer let's call it um, p equal kn plus lm which is just an integer so what do we end up with um, a times by p a times by an integer and what that means is well all of this here we've basically just shown is a times p and does a divide a times an integer 
Yes, it does. OK, so we can say that since A divides AP, therefore A divides BN plus, uh, sorry, B, BN plus CM as required. OK, use the division algorithm to find integers Q and R such that we have these two statements here. So we're trying to find the quotient and the remainder. So to tackle these types of questions, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out what's the maximum number of times in the first one, for example, that 13 goes into 94. Now, this is the way that I do it on my calculator. I would do 94 divided by 13. And uh, if I do that, I get 7.2 uh, that. So that means the maximum number of times that 13 goes into 94 is seven times and is a bit left over. OK, so I know that my quotient is seven. So 94 equals 13 times by seven now with some remainder. So how do I work out what the remainder is? Well, I'm now going to work out what um, 13 times seven is. And if I do 13 times 7, I get 91. So I know that my remainder is, um, let's write it down, R equals 94 minus 91. So my remainder is going to be 3. So 94 can be written as 13 times 7. There's my quotient plus the remainder of 3. So we'll just write our final answer down that Q, the quotient is seven, R, the remainder is three. Okay, part B. Now we need to be careful with part B because it's a negative number. So if I were to start by doing minus two, three, two, and divide that by the divisor 11. So let's do that. I would get minus 21 point something okay now the temptation is is to write the quotient as nine now let's do that and see what happens now remember the remainder needs to be positive so what happens if we do um, a quotient of uh, negative 21 so if i do negative two three two equals 11 times by negative 21. Now, if I do um, 11 times by negative 21, I get minus 2, 3, 1. So that would mean, so let's write this down. So this is minus 2, 3, 1. That would mean that I would have a remainder of negative 1. I've got to take away 1. That's not allowed. Yeah, the remainder must be positive. So it's not going to be negative 11. Uh, or sorry, it's not going to be 11 times by negative 21. It's actually going to be um, 11 times by negative 20. So you've got to be careful. So when you see you get a negative remainder, you basically need to bump it back up a bit. You need to make it closer to zero. Um, or you need to, sorry, you need to make it further away from zero. So we're going to have like negative 22 here so that we get a positive remainder. Yeah. So once you've done this type of calculation and it's negative, really what you need to do is to round down. Round down to the next negative number. So if you get negative 21 point whatever, round it down to negative 22. So that will give us minus 232 equals 11 times by 
negative 22. So if we do 11 times by negative 22 times by 11, uh, we get minus 242. So I'll write that down. So that's uh, negative 242. This will give us the positive remainder where we add 10. So that means that Q is negative 22, R is 10. So a little tip here. Um, let's write it down. When using the uh, division algorithm, an algorithm with negative numbers, with negative numbers, round the divisor sorry not the divisor round the quotient down round the quotient down so eg if you use your calculator and you've got a divisor of negative 7.011 something like that then round it down to negative 8 OK, to ensure you get a positive remainder, because the remainder, um, I was going to say the remainder theorem, the division algorithm insists that your remainder is positive. OK, this question says use a division algorithm to prove that for all integers n, n squared leaves a remainder of 0 or 1 when divided by four, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to write N um, as this using the division algorithm. So N can be four times a quotient plus a remainder. Now, for all numbers to be included, the remainder is either equal to zero, which means it can be divided by four, or it's one, or it's two, or it's three. And then we go back to the remainder being zero again. This covers all uh, values for n. Okay, this covers all integer values for n. So any number you can write as four times something with a remainder of either nothing, one, two, or three. Now, this is a question uh, where we need to prove it by exhaustion, which means we're going to have to do a statement for each one of these for different values of R and see what happens and work out the remainder. So let's start by working out what N squared is. So N squared, right. So when we do n squared, that will be 4q plus r all squared, right? So if we multiply that out, that will be 16q squared plus 8qr plus r squared, right? So let's consider what happens when r equals 0. Right, so when r equals 0, we will have um, 16q squared plus 8q times by r, which is 0, plus 0 squared. And that will give us um, just 16q squared. Um, 16q squared, well, that's 4 times something, 4 times q squared. OK, that's a, a, a number which can be divided by 4. So um, n squared is a multiple of 4. There's no remainder. OK, so in this case, n squared is a multiple of 4. four. Therefore, there is no remainder or remainder of 0. So that's the first case, right? OK, what happens when r equals 1? So when r equals 1, we'll have 16q squared plus 8q times by r, which is 1, plus 1 squared. 
um, that simplifies to 16q squared plus 8q plus 1. Right, so if we uh, deal with that, so we'll have 4 times 4q squared plus 8q. So we've got a multiple of 4 plus 1. So what does that mean? Um, we have a remainder of 1. So remainder equals 1. So if we divide n squared by 4 when r is 1, then you'll have 4 times something plus 1 is a remainder of 1. OK, how about when r equals 2? What happens there? So we have 16q squared plus 8q times by 2 plus 2 squared. So that will be 16q squared plus 16q plus 4. Well, this is going to be a multiple of 4, isn't it? Because 4 goes into all of those. OK, so it'll be the same statement as the first one. So there's no remainder. And we've only got one more case to consider, and that's when r equals 3. So that'd be 16 q squared plus 8q times by 3 plus 3 squared. So we can write that as 16q squared plus 24q plus, now I'm going to write it like this, plus 8 plus 1 because I will be able to do this, 4q squared plus 8, not 8q, uh, 6q, plus 2 plus 1. So the remainder is 1. Remainder equals 1. OK, so we can just write down. So um, n squared leaves a remainder of 0 or 1. There aren't any other options. So we get 0 here and here. And we get 1 here or here. So you should now be able to do exercise 1a on pages 4 to 5. So let's just start off with a quick recap. So Z represents Zalen, a Greek letter, sorry, not Greek letter, German letter, which we use to represent integers. N for natural numbers. So we know that this means that A divides B, or A is a divisor of B. Uh, what does that give us? Well, A divides itself. A divides 0, 0 can be divided by um, anything. If A divides B and B divides C, it follows that A will divide C. If A divides B and A divides C, so it's a factor of two different numbers, then it follows that A divides um, any multiple of the sum of B and C. Uh, this one goes both ways. If A divides B, then we can multiply up or divide down depending on which direction we use it. Then we have the actual um, division algorithm in that uh, we can write Numbers is all integers in the, this form. So this is where we are doing um, A divided by B. So A is called the dividend. B is the divisor, the thing that you're dividing by. Q is the quotient. How many times, how many whole number times does that divisor go into the dividend? And R is going to be R remainder and this can be written if we rearrange it we can say that the remainder equals a minus the divisor times by the quotient but it's important to note that the remainder must be positive r must 
be positive. So we've got to have a positive remainder. We can't have a negative remainder.